Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, we're going to be talking about the date and time functions in PHP. So with the date and the time function in PHP, you are able to add times into your PHP application. So basically, if you want to do something such as a log file, uh, you will be able to add a timestamp uh, to that log file. Or if you want uh, to show the end user, somebody coming to your, your application, uh, what day or what time an event happened, uh, you can use the date function in order to show that. So basically what we're going to be talking about today is how to add time and how to add dates into your PHP application. So when we talk about the time and the date functions in PHP, it's important that you understand what these functions are useful for. So when you hear of the time function and the date function, it seems pretty simple. It seems self-explanatory the way things in technology do. It's obvious what these functions do. One's for time and one's for date. This is the time function and this is the date function. How complicated can it be? Well, it's not complicated, but it's also not nearly as obvious as you may first assume. So when we talk about the time function, we talk about the date function it is important to understand that these are two different functions and they have uh, different uh, utilities uh, when you're creating your PHP code so the the time function we talk about the time function basically what the time function is going to do is it's going to return the number of seconds since epoch so Unix epoch is considered January 1st 1970 and so it's going to say how many seconds it's been since January 1st 1970 you're gonna get a really long 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 number uh, to tell you how many seconds it's been so when you're dealing with the time function this can be very useful uh, for when you're creating scripts and you're trying to see how often something happens you know so check for every 60 seconds so 60 seconds is a minute uh, 600 seconds is a uh oh, is uh, 10 minutes, you know, so on and so forth. So basically figuring out how many seconds is a minute or whatever length of time you want. And then, you know, going through and basically being to do being able to do if else statements based off of the number of seconds. That's one of the utilities uh, for the time function. But it is important to understand when you're dealing with the time function, you're not going to see 12 o'clock. It's not going to say 1230. It's going to say, you know, what do I have up here? 15877338879 that's the result that you're going to get out of it so again very very useful in the the coding world again if you're doing if else statements or things like that uh, that can be very useful uh, but it's kind of crap to the end user again just that that long number doesn't really mean anything to anybody uh, so that's where the date function comes in so what the date function it does is it actually allows you to format a timestamp in a human readable fashion so it'll tell you uh, basically the minute the hour the minute the second it'll tell you the day it'll tell you you the year it'll tell you the month basically you can format timestamps in any number of different ways there's a lot of different options you can add to the date function uh, to give you the type of timestamp you want whether you want it to be a 24 hour timestamp or a 12 12 hour a.m. p.m. timestamp whether you want to show again the day or the year or any of that type of stuff that is what you're able to do with the date function so the time function gives you the second sense since epoch the date function actually gives you something in the human readable format now one of the problems you may run into though is you're sitting there and you're thinking like okay well if the time function gives me this horribly god awful long number and the date function gives me uh you know something human readable how do i turn the time the timestamp from the time function into something that's actually human readable and so one of the cool things with the date function is you can actually feed it that timestamp that second since epoch you can feed that to the date function and then ask it for whatever you want out of that timestamp uh, and then it will be able to return the value not only is it able to return the value but then you can also assign that value to a variable so uh so let's say you want to go through a log file and you wanted to check for records only on fridays right so you can actually grab the timestamp from the time function run it through the date function and basically pull out whether whether that timestamp is on a friday if it is on a friday assign that value to the variable and then do some if else statement or so whatever else if it's on any other day of the week 
don't. So that's one of the cool things with it. The date function is basically you can feed it a timestamp from the time function. You can give it all the kinds of options. You can say for year, you can say for month, you can say for day, you can say whatever else. You can simply print that out onto the screen or you can actually assign that value to a variable. And then once that value is assigned to a variable, then you can test against it. So those, those are why the time and date functions are very useful. Uh, so with that, let's go over to the demonstration machine. I'll show you how this stuff gets printed out uh, and then I'll go over and show you the actual code itself. So here we are at my demonstration machine. Uh, the demonstration machine really doesn't matter. All I need is a web browser that is able to connect to my web server and be able to pull up the time date PHP script that I've created. Uh, so here, basically, I've just spit out uh, the, the values uh, from the functions. Uh, this first is from the time function itself. So if you call the time function, again, it'll give you the second since epoch. And these are all the seconds since epoch. Again, if I refresh, you can see as I refresh, you know, as the seconds go by, uh, that ticks along. So basically, that's what the time function outputs. And again, this can be very useful for you within code if you're if you're trying to see, you know, what happened within an hour, or what happened within a certain amount of seconds uh, from certain events. Just having a pure number like this can be very valuable. But obviously, looking at this number as a, a normal human, um, <laughs> I, I don't know what the hell to make out of this. Uh, uh, then we go down here and this is where we're actually just spitting out the date function so this is just the date function itself so you can use just the date function without feeding it a time the time function uh, to spit out again whatever kind of timestamp that you want uh, so this is showing me the month this is showing me the current year this is showing me the current day hour minute second and it's on the 12 hour scheme so then i'm spitting out uh, am here so basically uh, when i call the date function i'm able to give it a lot of different options and so that that's what I'm having spit out here. Then if we come down here to the third example, what I've done in this particular example is I fed the timestamp. So this is the timestamp up here. So I fed this timestamp to the date function. And then all I've said is I want to know what the day is, what the hour is, what the minute is, and what the second is. So again, that's where you can, you can you know, put in or take out whatever options you want for the date function. And so that's what I put there. Uh, then we come down here using the date function. What I've done is I've created just a really long, tedious um, manual timestamp. So again, so imagine you're going into a database, you're looking in the past. So you're not looking at a current timestamp, you're looking at a previous timestamp. So what I did was I just kind of just screwed around, made it made a random timestamp. And so that random timestamp, when I pump it through into the date function, that the timestamp stamp I give it is December 2013, Saturday, Saturday at eight o'clock in the morning, 1452 seconds, right? So basically, I just want to show you that you can, you know, give a previous timestamp to the date function, and it will spit out when that time was in the past. And then the final thing that I've done here is out of that manual timestamp that I've created, what I've done is I've pulled out the value for the day of that timestamp. So it was on a Saturday. Um, and then I assigned that value to a variable. And then I'm simply echoing out the value of the variable. What I want to show you here is that you can assign that value to a variable. And obviously, once you've assigned that value to a variable, then you can test uh, off of it as you see fit. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the code itself. So here we are on my web server. Again, I'm using uh, Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. I'm using the desktop version. So again, we have something visual to, to take a look at. Uh, everything that I'm showing you today should basically run on any version, any distribution of Linux that you're using. Uh, so for here, uh, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the PHP like we normally do. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna create a variable called timestamp and we're going to assign it the value of time. So again, when we talk about the time uh, function, all it is is time. Uh, with the parentheses and that value is going to be here for the timestamp then what we're simply going to do is we're going to echo out whatever the value of timestamp is if we go over take a look at the demonstration so this is what is getting spit out here this is the the result of the time function then we're going to go down we're going to break so again we get a little little space between uh, what's getting printed out and then here we're simply calling the date function so we're just going to simply echo out date function and then we're going to give it a whole bunch of options so this is where we say month then we say year then we see say day hour um, this is actually minute uh, second 
and then this is where we say AM or PM. So we're gonna say echo the date, and this is going to be the timestamp that we get echoed out. And if we go back and we take a look at the demonstration, this is what is simply getting printed out on the screen. Now, if you wanna know all of the different options for the date function, you can go to uh, W3Schools, and they can show you all of the different parameters. Uh, so the reason, the reason I'm not going to demonstrate all the different parameters is because, wow, they, they have a lot of different parameters so basically depending on how you want the date timestamp represented you can plug in all of this different different information so i would i would tell you uh, to go ahead and play with it now one of the things i do want to show you though is if we take a look here at the actual uh, timestamp here you see how it says 10 colon 05 colon 26 it is important to understand that these little colons in here don't actually matter so again when you're when you're dealing with php functions Understanding when quotation marks matter, understanding when colons or semicolons or commas or whatever matter is very important. So it's important to understand uh, these actually are not really used by the function, right? So if we go over and we take a look at the code itself, we can see here it's the hour, uh, colon, um, minute, colon, second. So you can simply modify that to be whatever you want. That is actually not being used in the function. So don't get confused by that. So if I hit save, we go back to the demonstration and then I hit refresh. We can see now I have hyphens in between here. Um, if we go back and uh, let's say I just uh, get rid of that entirely, right? So now there are simply spaces, do file and do save. We go back and we take a look at the demonstration. Uh, now it's looked like that. So 10 minutes, 11 seconds, 12 or 10 hours, 11 seconds, or 11 minutes, 12 seconds, uh, but we can see that there's not no colons in between. So basically when you're formatting how the time will look, the colons or the hyphens or anything else, you can just plug that in there. The important thing, the important thing is not those, it's that you use the appropriate letters that they tell you to do and the options. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Uh, then we're gonna echo, break, break again. And then we're gonna use uh, the date function like we used up here. Uh, but the difference is, is we're actually going to feed at the timestamp. So we're, again, we assigned, we assigned the, the time to the, the value of the timestamp function. So we're gonna be feeding that in here, and then we're going to say how we want it to be formatted. So again, when we're talking about the date, we can format it any number of ways. So basically what I'm saying here is I wanna know what the day is, I wanna know the hour, the minute, the second, and I want that printed out on the screen. Again, if we take a look at the demonstration then, again, we have the day, hour, a minute and second so again it's very important to understand when you're dealing with the date function you can format things however you like then we're gonna do the break again we're gonna come down here and then I'm just simply going to create a manual timestamp so I created a variable called timestamp manual and then I just kind of plug some numbers in I mean again don't completely randomly plug numbers in that will probably give you a real mess uh, but basically what I did was was basically I uh, just went up here I took a look at what the timestamp was and then as as I went through the numbers I just futzed around with what those numbers were. And so that's where I get this tediously long timestamp number. Uh, but then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. We're going to do the echo again uh, with the date function. I'm then going to feed that manual timestamp I fed in here. And then I want it formatted month, year, uh, day of it, hour, minute, second. And that's where we can go and we can see. So this, this is the human readable version of that timestamp that I created. So again, this is the important thing when you're dealing with with log files or when you're dealing with timestamps whenever humans actually have to read the timestamp you can just feed it to the date function and it will turn it into that human readable format the final thing we did down here is we could break break again and then what I wanted to show you that you then can assign the value of what you pull out of the date function to a variable so we have this dollar sign test day so I created a variable called test day and basically what I wanted to do here is I simply wanted to pull the full day, um, basically the full word for the day. So not F-R-I or not S-A-T or S-U-N. I wanted to pull the full name. And so basically here, so date L will give you the full name of the day. And then I fed, fed that timestamp manual. So that's Saturday. So basically I'm pulling out Saturday. I'm assigning Saturday to the test day. Um, so that is now the value of that variable. And then I'm simply uh, echoing out the value of the variable. If we go here, what we can see then is again, so the value 
value of test day is now Saturday. And again, the important thing with this, the most important thing here is what I'm showing you is you can assign values out of the date functions to variables. And then again, you can then test based off of what those values are. Um, and so that's the basics of how to use the time and the date functions. Again, remember time. Time many times is most useful when you're actually writing a code and you need to just do basic, basic very simple comparisons between uh, different times. Uh, the date function is really used any time that you're going to have to make the timestamp human readable, then you're going to want to use that date function. So there you go. Now you know how to use both the time and the date functions in PHP. Again, dealing with time in your applications is going to be a very important thing. So you're going to have to really think about when to use the time function and when to use the date function. Um, I would really argue many times whenever you're going to be putting uh, values into something like a database, so a time value into a database, I would really recommend that you use the time function. And then if you need to you turn that into a human readable format, then when you're pulling it out of the database, run it through the date function with whatever options that you want uh, to, to make it human readable. I would argue that's probably a better way of dealing with things like timestamps, again, when you're dealing with databases or putting things into any kind of data files that will then be uh, pulled out later. Um, again, one of the very useful things is with the date function is you can actually assign uh, the values that you pull out of the date function to variables. So again, if, if you have uh, something in your database, some kind of log file in your database, and you want to say, okay, I want to see all the events that simply happen on a Saturday, or I want to see all the events that happened in March or something like that. Uh, one of the cool things that you can do is you can actually just simply pull out the day or whatever, you know, some specific thing from the timestamp. And then again, you, you can test it based off of that. So that can be a very useful thing. Uh, dealing with time and date is just one of those things you're going to have to play with. Time, again, is, is pretty simple unto itself. It just gives you the second since epoch. Uh, date is one thing I would really argue that you go play with. Again, W3 schools, they have a list of all those parameters. <laughs> and again, I'm not going to go through all those parameters because there must be 40 different parameters there. I mean, there's every way in the world that you can format the, the time and date uh, you know, timestamp that you're going to be creating. So go through, play with that. Um, basically, if you think that you should be able to do something with a date function, uh, most likely with all of those parameters, you probably can, uh, relatively simple. Uh, so as always, I enjoyed doing this class and look forward to seeing the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there's also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.